Welcome back to Unfold Data Science friends. This is Aman here and I am a data scientist. Some of you have been asking me how to stay relevant or how to stay competitive in the world of data science in given current market scenario. Rather in the longer run how you can stay relevant and how you can stay ahead in competition in the world of data science. That is what we will discuss in this video. I'm going to talk about five points from my experience of data science based on which you can have a better growth in the career of data science and you will know what works in a longer run for the world of data science. Let us start one by one. Now before talking about those five points, let me ask you a simple question. Let's take an example of something different from data science. Okay. So imagine for a moment that you own a physical mobile phone store. You own a physical mobile phone store in a market. So how do you stay competitive or how do you stay ahead in the market with respect to other shops, other mobile phone shops in that market? Very basic stuffs, right? You maintain good stocks, latest phones, the old phones. You give good sales and services. You retain your old customer and try to get the new customers. These are some of the basic fundamentals using which you will ensure that your business runs smooth or you stay ahead in the competition. Now we will relate these things to what we should do in data science so that our career goes smooth and we stay ahead in competition. Number one, be agile, talk agile. Now why I am putting so much focus on agile guys? I know many of us want to work in an environment where we want to take some piece of work, perform it and then maybe after a week or so we want to show it to someone. Okay? Many of us in the world of data science is not in a habit of giving regular updates. But how agile works is you need to give regular updates, you need to break your task into subtasks, you need to attend the scrum meetings, it's little different. All the projects nowadays, almost 90% of the projects are either moving towards Agile or have already moved to Agile. So Agile is a working methodology of a project. I have created detailed video on how Agile model works and how it is different from traditional waterfall model. As a data scientist, you and me must be in the Agile mindset. You and me must adapt to that culture. That is point number one. Point number two is how do you industrialize what you do? So if there is a huge case, you must not only think from the point of view of showing it to someone or just taking it to a place where you just give a presentation and that's all. No, you always have to think from the industrialization point of view. You have to think from how can you deploy that model in production? You have to think from how can you benefit business from it? What you are using internally in the model is one part of it. The other part of it is how it is going to be beneficial for the business. How the end user is going to consume it. Now when we talk of end user consuming something, then there are few things you must understand. One is if you build a model, that model will be hosted on a server. Most of the server are Unix servers. So you must know basics of Unix basics of Unix command, what is cell script, how to write a basic cell script, what is different kind of permissions on file, how do you invoke your Python script from cell script, some basic Unix scripting kind of thing. And you should have some idea about what is front end, what is back end, what is client, what is server, what is client server architecture, how a web application works. By combining these two things, you will ensure that you have the understanding of how your model will be consumed by the end user or how you can put that in a production for industry use. That is point number two. Point number three is, I tell this to everyone every time, be flexible, be flexible with your tools, technology and learnability. So Aman is a guy who knows R and Python, who has been working for few years now in R and Python. But tomorrow there is a requirement for Julia as a tool 
somebody is looking for someone who knows Julia. Aman might not have worked in Julia before, but does Aman have the inclination to learn? Does Aman have the flexibility to learn Julia and do it? Or at least show the interest to learn a new thing and do it? Let us relate it to the mobile phone store, right? All the new mobile phones that come should be there in your store. That is where your store is attractive. That is where you stay ahead from 4-5 shops in the market who do not maintain the new collection or new mobile phones. Any new things that is there in the market, be it Julia, be it something on image technique, be it something on advanced deep learning techniques, if these things are there with you, if you are inclined to learn these things, then obviously you have a larger basket to offer your client. That is point number three. Point number four is make big data and cloud your friend. Okay, so all of us know that mo most of the companies after this pandemic scenario will be adapting cloud technology. The reason they want a, they want a place where their data is secure and their data is they do not want a local maintenance of the data. They want a centralized maintenance of the data. So cloud is going to take a big boom and big data has already taken a big boom. So it is very important for you to understand how big data system works, what is Haroop, what is big data, what are different tools around big data, for example, Hive, for example, Spark, for example, different, different big data tools, right? And how cloud works, be it Amazon cloud, be it Microsoft cloud. There are many free tutorials given by Amazon and Microsoft, which you can go through and learn so many things about this. I'm not talking about basics. Many things they have taught in those tutorials, which is free. I'll paste the link for those. Amazon Web Service, Microsoft Azure, many tutorials are available for free. I'll paste the link, okay? And the second thing is big data. So my plan is to create a detailed playlist on what is big data, how big data works, how Hive works, how Spark works, how the SDFS system looks like, many things around SDFS. I plan to create a detailed video on that. If you want me to create, just write me in comments so that I get to know that you are also interested in big data landscape. But these are two things that you must have with you and keep growing your knowledge on big data and cloud technologies. Okay. These are the four things that is on either technical side or how you should look to the work. Next thing I'm going to talk about is a behavioral aspect or you know, a day to day thing that you can do without any technicality in that. And that is nothing but keep growing your network, keep connecting to new people, make your network bigger, make your area bigger. So if you know, I give this example many times to many people. If you know 500 people in data science space, and if I know 5000 people in data science space, then tomorrow I'll have more opportunities if I want to change job. Tomorrow, I'll have more connections if I want to publish a paper. I can get some information easily, which you might not get. Since I have more connections, my network is bigger. So this is in short and crisp way, how you can have a very good career in data science in the longer run. If you relate it to the my mobile phone store example, you are maintaining the old stock and new stocks. You are giving good sales and services and by connecting to different people in the network, what you are doing is you are maintaining your old customers and gaining new customers as well. So I'm sure you would have understood what I'm coming here to say. I'm sure you will follow all these points and then your career will boom in data science world. I'll come up with another interesting video guys. If you have any doubts, write me in comment. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.